back ladies and gentlemen after the short break that all of us have just had it's time now to begin with our next session and we're going to do so with a presentation on can banks lead climate change reversal and to take us through this presentation we have with us mr srinivas varadarajan the co-founder and ceo vigyan labs may i request all of you to please give him a round of applause and welcome him on stage 10 minutes i'll lead you through a, a new concept of intelligent power management before going to the details i just want you to you know uh, look at some very important aspects right let us look at you know we have seen lot of you know innovations happening in the sorry important that's about the power uh, let me just tell a story how this you know how did you get this idea about you know saving power right it was almost in 2008 9 right so uh, mr nandan nilkani called us to help him in designing the other infrastructure so myself and a set of colleagues who had experience in building very large infrastructures around the globe uh, we went about looking at building the uh, other designing the other infrastructure so if you look at the whole other infrastructure the back end is petabytes of data 100000 plus cores what happens when you put all those things no yes there are lot of innovations happening in servers like you know putting you know Six core, eight core, ten core CPUs. You put multiple CPUs. So one of the challenges we faced was we started, you know, putting the biometrics uh, applications in the data center. This biometric application. Look at, you know, if you look at Google, Google does a few tera, you know, teraflops of computations. What happens in Azure today? Let me just look at the high level, right? Your biometric is compared with every other citizen's biometric to match and say is match or not. It means today the database is 74 crores, roughly around 74 crores, 740 million. It's one of the world's largest database. So you want to enroll a next citizen, 740, 74 crores plus one citizen. You have to do n into n, n plus one by two comparisons, n square. We do one million such comparisons every day, which is trillions and trillions. Right? It's probably the largest database in the world and the largest computing infrastructure, single largest computing infrastructure. when we started this building this uh, data center we found the racks used to trip used to run out of power typical average indian data center used to have 7 kva to 10 kva load and then you know servers used to get hot servers used to fail so then we wrote the specs you know for you know saying can anybody come and help us cutting down the power consumption by 50% we wanted we had ambitious goal of cutting by 50% myself and couple of us wrote the rfp asking for all the requirements everybody in the world came and gave us solutions but i think you know we could never get a solution which does does more than 10% then we said okay we are not happy with it right but we had to live with it it was available once we finished uh, other project we said this is a real problem nobody has solved it what can we do about it okay so we started thinking differently Uh, let us look at the whole thing uh, power consumption from a different angle right can you tell me which is the most energy efficient computer in the world today most energy efficient sometimes you know if you want to find you know some out of the box solutions very often you need to go back to nature <laughs> and everything you want to solve in the world the problem is nature nature has been evolved you know billions of years it has solved many of the problems if you look at look back at nature you'll know how inefficient we are in everything we do right we try to create machines we try to create automate process but we forget to look at nature and how efficient is a brain tell me how much energy does it consume look at the nearest computer which can do the super computer in the world today which can come near, nearest to this one the nearest super computer to simulate a human brain of 1 second takes 45 minutes and consumes gigawatts hundreds of gigawatts of power so we are you know order of magnitude away from the real efficiency which can be achieved which is possible but some day we need to envision that which is possible to achieve somewhere close to that that means all the equipment used in the world today is 99.999% inefficient right so there is a still scope for huge amount of improvement so that's how the, our idea of intelligent power management came into being so you know to build a such a product 
it requires innovation across the space, right? Across the hardware, software, entire stack. So other experience helped us, you know, to understand, uh, you know, uh, real problem and we solve the problem. And today, IPM Plus is pretty much uh, recognized globally. I'm just coming up from another function where we received the <coughs> AMA award from innovation. Pretty much we have got every other award in innovation globally. I'll just walk you through our innovation and how it can help the banks. I recently must have heard, a couple of years back, Japan faced this you know, Fukushima disaster, uh, nuclear disaster. After the Japanese government started imposing uh, some restrictions on energy consumption. So the mandated energy efficiency in all uh, uh, equipments, IT equipment. And we do have here IPM Plus, which actually is uh, made in India, exported to Japan today. And uh, as of today, we just started shipping the software recently in the Japanese machines. As of today, by volume, we are the number one in Japan. And by end of the year, we expect to have 20% of the market in Japan, all the hardware created with IPM Plus. So what is happening today, you know? We are having a lot of devices. Each of us have a PC at home, a smartphone, a couple of smartphones, not a few tablets. And once upon a time, aviation was thought as the you know, uh, industry which creates a lot of you know, you know, CO2 emission, emissions and gases. But quietly, today, with billions and billions of devices today, IT industry is the number one single largest polluter, indirectly. So 10% of the electricity produced worldwide is consumed by the IT including the end client devices, the intermediate devices, and the back-end data centers, right? So quietly, it's increasing day by day. Every time you buy a smartphone, somebody has to add a network port, somebody has to add a network switch, some capacity has to be in the data center. So you look at the millions of devices sold every year. Every year, you need to add an equal amount of back-end infrastructure to support all these devices. Quietly, this is increasing today, right? And this is not going to reduce, it's going to increase you already have a quad core, quad core, uh, core device in your hand. It's going to be eight core. Maybe in a couple of years from now, we'll have a you know, very, very you know, highly efficient and also very powerful device in your hand itself. And one of the things we always look at, you know, what happens about power, right? We look at IT from one, one angle only. How much power bill I pay? But unlike you know, IT infrastructure, creating the electricity infrastructure is very expensive, actually. Do you know that you know to create a capex to create an infrastructure of one unit of, to generate one unit of power, you need to build a lot of infrastructure from the generating station to the end. Although you may pay between you know anywhere between eight rupees, fifteen rupees in the country for you know one unit of power, to build the capacity to generate a power, it costs almost three thousand dollars to build a capacity. So by reducing power consumption or wasting the efficiency, uh, reducing the inefficiencies, you are able to reduce the cost across across the whole spectrum. If you look at two different things here, what this picture depicts is, yes, we are moving away, moving into smart devices. Smart devices are distributed. They are consuming you know, a few watts of power, but they are in billions. Whereas in the server side, data centers, you have few servers, but they consume huge amount of power. So both are equally important. Large number of devices is consuming small amount of power, small number of devices which are consuming a large amount of power. So this is a ubiquitous problem. And we are looking at the solving the entire spectrum of problems. And just look at, you know, one of the things easily forgotten today, we look at data centers as one big source of energy consumption. What is also forgotten is the office energy consumption. We have a lot of desktops, laptops. Unfortunately, a lot of desktops or laptops are, you know, kept idle throughout the day. That's the statistics from around the world and which you have seen even in India too. So 50% of the energy is wasted in the end-user computing environment. You can save, harness that part of the 50% itself is a significant amount of energy and money too. And we have seen this problem in every, every vertical. You know, we have worked with education, hospitals, financial institutions, government offices, pretty much everywhere. So what is IPM plus you know, unique about it? See, what happens today, one of the important things, if you, not, if you don't measure something, you can't save, right? 
is it possible to put an energy meter on every machine everywhere in your office every energy consuming endpoint it's very expensive right there is no roi any technology which helps you to save something has to have a real roi so what we what have we done today one of the part of innovation is to having innovated a software meter which can measure the consumption very very accurately what is it cost cost negligible to have a software meter you can deploy 100000 million devices it's very easy to deploy on millions of devices a low small footprint then it can measure and tell you the consumption so by so by which we are able to measure and look at the energy consumption so ipm plus has been patented in the us and around the world today we have you know hp has oeming this product is being used you know used widely around the world today went through a rigorous defense uh, lab research so almost we spent a year in the defense labs today i think as as we speak now so getting into rolled out into many of the defense equipment and uh, the central research laboratory did a very very extensive research on all of the technologies so i have certified that this technology sir consumes 30% more power than any other technology out in the world today so we gone through almost one year of you know field testing lab testing the defense laboratories you know? and again the us we worked with lot of energy utilities because energy utilities look at if i can reprovision the existing infrastructure to provide power to those who need it right rather than building new infrastructure because i said you know it cost so much of money uh, to build a new infrastructure so look at coal coal is a dirty energy hydro power you can't easily set up nuclear is again issue solar and thermal have very or have we you know have a long duration roi so the only way is to save existing energy and reuse it you know wherever we need you know we need it so today comed sgnd stg all these guys provide nearly 15 dollar dollars plus incentive per machine one time incentive to all our customers in us who is our product so we got a big one of the big five vendors to you know certify the energy metering as 95% accurate we are able to meet the japanese requirement on peak power one interesting thing innovation we did for japan because of the nuclear disaster one of the biggest problem was the peak load is very high so today in large number of banks and other institutions we do use laptops what happens is that you know laptops are connected to the main supply so most of the time you are charging the battery and discharging it so the innovation we did for japan was to be able to centrally program the laptop which laptop should charge when when they should not charge so by distributing the charging period interval throughout the day we are able to reduce the load by 10 to 15% okay so these are you know uh some of our customers in the finance service industry one of the bank is largest bank is you know ussc the nz bank in india operations nz bank is saving about 100 megawatt hours hours in a, every month i think again hdfc life has again, again significant amount of savings in their operations pretty much in ingalls all around the manufacturing industry gmr you will pretty much see soon see all over airports in india harnessing our green technology so these are the global awards we won uh, last couple of years gartner names is a cool vendor who has been able to innovate in the entire spectrum of it in the in the it devices so right from the source right from the energy meter to the end point very innovatively we were able to apply this technology and provide value to the customers just to give an example of how a dashboard you know how does a dashboard look like you know so when you save energy on an end point there's a cumulative savings and there's a side effects because when you one watt saved on a so when you any it equipment consumes a watt of power 50% of the energy is actually dissipated to heat so when you save one watt on a uh, on a desktop or a server you can always save a part of the energy you save on the air conditioning other it equipment too. so this is example from an ng bank it's a couple of months back you know when you took the snapshot we saved 54 megawatt hours in one building on the end computing equipment which again resulted in a 35 megawatt hour savings on the ups and the air conditioning okay what how does the story look like for a you know, ng bank in india right so you know saving almost 200 to 300000 dollars per year globally they'll be saving from this year onwards almost 2 to 3 million dollars so the when i spoke to the bank ceo This is the story. The CEO said, "Why did you choose our product?" Right? Says non-intrusive energy savings. Except the IT team, nobody knows something is running in their entire infrastructure. Nobody really knows what what is happening there. The sustainable team was given a target of saving, reducing the CO2 emissions by six percent. They committed last year by you know said we'll at least do three percent. 
without having a budget for it. But when 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 they deployed IPM plus, they're able to exceed the target by almost two x, and there's no cash output from from them. So we are able to provide you an ROI. They're able to meet the sustainability goals, they reduce energy consumption without really any end of the year no cash outflow from them. That's the value we have been provided. So why? So why, this is a you know statement from the CEO of ANZ, saying why did he choose this product? Right? He said you know non-intrusive, able to provide energy savings. It's able to support all kinds of hardware in the in the right infrastructure. It's able to scale to the large bank. It was easy for them to deploy, very very easy for them to deploy. It. They were able to go up and running very very short amount of time. Then it's able to quantify the energy savings in terms of energy savings, CO2 emissions, and just roughly, you know, this tells about you know what kind of energy savings is possible in a typical IT infrastructure. <laughs> And end, end user computing environment. Just roughly, you know, the amount may vary depending on the energy pricing and the geography you're using. In a typical PC, you can roughly say the overall you can save up to up to forty dollars per PC per year, right? It's a long number. Although we all look at the servers, I said, you know, we forget that you know the end user computing itself is a fairly significant amount of uh, energy consume, consumption. See, these are the various awards we received this year, uh, uh, and uh, thanks. You know, I'd like to finally thank all our customers, banks, and financial institutions who have been supporting us, did pilots with us, you know, uh, spent a lot of time with us understanding the product, deploying it, and finally supporting us in this journey. So, what is our vision? Where do we want to go? I grew up in a small town where we always used to have power cuts, right? Used to buy with lamps. I, I studied my you know 12th board exam using a lamp because the power failed. There was a thunderstorm in the city. Power failed. There was no power. But today, most of the rural places in India don't have power because somebody else is using the power. We in the cities consume a lot of power, lot amount of power. We can save and have a lot of energy. We can make you know. We can provide power to those who don't have it. So what are we trying to do? We have set up a vision for our company. We want to save enough power to light a billion homes. Where are we in the journey of billion homes today? We have, we have been able to save enough power till day today to light up about 60 million homes. So our, we don't stop there. We'll keep continuing our journey till we meet a vision of billion homes. Thank you. <laughs>